You grew up as the only child of parents that were both deaf. Was your mm -hmm. mom totally deaf also? Yeah, my mom was uh, what they call hearing impaired. Uh -huh. And so my mom, I mean, this is it's a medical situation where my grandmother, RH factor, where the, the, the body fights against a pregnancy. Yeah. And that's what caused my mom to be deaf. And she had cerebral palsy. She had cerebral and, palsy too. Yeah, yeah, cerebral palsy. And uh, so crazy story. My mom and dad meet. She went to North Carolina school for the deaf and blind. Uh -huh. And my dad went to Florida school for the deaf and blind. And uh, they had this big alumni function. Two schools play each other. A bunch of deaf people get together. They meet. My, my mom and dad get married and my mom can't have kids. And obviously really? just, yeah, she couldn't have kids. She was told huh. medically she'd never have children. And just, it's a miracle. So they, they tried to have kids for six years. Apparently my mom passed away a couple two years ago. My dad passed away a couple months ago. And I started to learn all this stuff kind of yeah. the yeah. end of their life. Yeah. They couldn't have kids. They tried for six years. And, um, my mom, crazy story. I just read this in my grandmother's journal. My mom went to a, a tent healing service. All right. <laughs> so check this out. My, my mom, my, my grandmother's journal says we go to a, a, a tent healing service. And, and I, I know there's probably a lot of thoughts of people. Yeah, watching there's lots right of now. people we, with images TV, rushing through their mind the, right now. Yep. Yeah. We, we've seen all the weird that uh -huh. happens and all that stuff. And my mom goes to this and she's deaf. And this guy talking from the stage picks out my mom and says, you're going to, you're going to have a baby. No way. Yes. So my mom's deaf doesn't understand. She can't hear a word saying. because nobody's signing for him, right? Nobody's signing. Yeah. So she doesn't so, know what he's saying. He's just pointing at her. Pointing at her. And she's like to her mom, my grandmother, what's he saying? She's like, this is the word. Yeah, what are you saying? Right. And uh, she's like, what is he saying? And my grandmother goes, he says you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and, and man, I was born. That is incredible. <laughs> what? That's incredible, man. So my mom and dad would always tell me there's something special about you, something special yeah. about you. And, um, so, you know, born hearing, it's not genetic. I, I'd learned that along the way. Some, I mean, my situation was not genetic. I, I didn't get cerebral palsy and I wasn't deaf. And I, I, listen, I wouldn't have been opposed to that if that's what God wanted right. for me. But, but, um, I grew up with two deaf parents. Number one question I get, Jeff, how does I, how do I learn? How did I learn how to talk? Yeah. I don't even know. I have no idea. I was I about no to say. Nothing. Right now, people are asking all kinds of questions about you. Like, if you're the only, hey, by the way, I just watched the Apple movie Coda, where yes, there's one member of the family that can speak and hear, and everybody else around them is deaf. And that movie just describes beautifully what it looks like for the, the one person in the family that can hear. Yep. Everybody's wondering right now, like, what was this like for you as a kid? And how did you learn to communicate? And what was school like? And like 50 other questions. So, man, just if you don't mind, hit the highlights of the questions that are running through people's yeah. minds about <laughs> you right now. Like, how did you do this, Ed? Yeah, well, CODA, child of deaf adult is what that means. And um, man, back in the day and, and CODA, that, that film was absolutely breathtaking for yeah, me to watch. It was because awesome. that was that was my story minus the fact I couldn't sing and I didn't have a, a, a deaf <laughs> brother and, uh, and I wasn't a part of a fishing industry, but my mom and dad depended on me to interpret everything. everything. Yeah. Everything. So um, imagine, imagine any form of interaction with a, a parent that's deaf with a hearing world, which is everywhere. I was the mediator. Yeah, you were basically their translator for translator. everything. Everywhere I went, I had to make sure they understood what was going on. So at the age of five, six, seven, eight, where I was able to at least talk, um, I just learned this just because I told you my parents just passed away. And some of the stuff my before before my dad died, he said, he said, he said, son, you helped me negotiate buying a house when you were 10. No, my, I'm sorry, my aunt, my aunt told me this what? after my dad died at his memorial service. Wow. You, 
you helped him interpret brokering a deal on buying some house at 10 oh, years like, old, at 10 years old. Holy cow. <laughs> and, uh, every doctor's visit, a funny story is my dad's passing a kidney stone. And uh, Which hurts like murder. Yeah, so he's driving and, and, and like just about to pass out. We get into the emergency room. I'm interpreting. All I know is my dad's junk hurt. That's yeah, all it know. hurts down there where it's not supposed <laughs> to hurt. I I'm like, he's hurting. We go back. He's screaming. I'm interpreting. I'm like nine, ten. He's butt naked. I am trying to figure out how you do this without cursing while you're signing for your dad that it hurts down there for him. Yeah, I'm like, it hurts down there, you know, <laughs> And then we get back there. He's on a gurney. He's butt naked. He's screaming. I'm like, I don't, there's something wrong, you know? So my whole life was that of interpreting with my uh, mom and dad for meals, uh, utility bill discrepancies. Um, Oh my goodness, man. Listen, this Jeff, I think our audience would love to hear this. Do you remember the movie? Hellraiser. Yeah, of course. Pinheads. Remember yeah, he had the pinhead? Uh-huh, right? yeah. My first movie I go see as a kid is Hellraiser <laughs> with my dad. Sure. <laughs> and so, and this is the sign for half, right? Uh-huh. You don't have to be fluent in sign. Yeah. So uh, this is my, my childhood as a kid. Go to the box office. Say, we, I need two tickets. I'm a kid. Yeah. Trying to explain. You need two explain. tickets to the movie Hellraiser. Yeah. I, I said, um, two tickets for Hellraiser. She looks at me and she goes, it, you can't go. It's R. I'm like, yeah. you know, elementary. I go, right. he's deaf. I'm interpreting. And then, then my dad hits me with, tell him to give us half. Price yeah. Off. He wants a discount because he of wants a discount. Right. <laughs> so I'm now negotiating a discount at Hellraiser. This elementary age child trying to get into an adult movie and trying to negotiate a better deal for it. So I'm interpreting the whole movie. That was my childhood. My dad was a big movie guy. Yeah. And um, we just saw Top Gun 2 right before he died. And they now have technology where it's a little apparatus that gives you close caption. Oh, yeah. Movie. Wow. It's incredible. Awesome. But but back in the day, that was me sitting next to my dad interpreting every. Signing every word of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So my my childhood was filled with all of that. But I look back on it. I think about my dad. My dad couldn't hold a job because once more, ADA compliance, right. there was no yeah. rules and regulations. They'd make up crap. You know, hey, uh, if a, literally my dad got fired one time, they were like, you know, we, we're tired of writing stuff down to help you understand. Yeah. He, he couldn't hold a job. So I started his own stuff. My mom, check this out, Jeff. My mom. Um, when ADA became a thing, uh-huh. equal opportunity for people with disability. Yeah, I was about to say, life. for those of you that are living outside the United States, this was when the U.S. government said, we have to treat people with disabilities like Correct. everybody else. We're going to make my, it so that they can happen. Uh, you know, live like everybody else can. Sorry, exactly. go ahead. My mom, and my mom applied at the, American, uh, or the United States Post Office. $5 an hour, sorting mail, and... Um, so we're living on social security yeah. disability, yeah. both my parents. And this comes about, and my mom starts off making minimum wage. And I remember my dad going, no, 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 you're going to make less money working, working at the post office than, than actually getting a social security, yeah. security disability check. And my mom was like, I want to do something. All right. And um, she sorted mail. And then it was a Christmas time, Orlando, Florida. It, it's on Tradeport Drive. It's the uh-huh. big, big one in Orlando. They needed help in the finance department to sort through um, payroll. And my mom's a mathematical wizard. And, uh, and she never left the, the, the finance department. Retired uh-huh. from the United States Post Office. My dad had no benefits because he was self-employed. Yeah. And, and my mom, because of that opportunity, was able to set my dad up with insurance after she passed away. Uh, so, yeah. so my whole story was basically my mom and dad were underdogs. My mom and dad um, were discriminated against because of their disability. Deaf yeah. and dumb was a phrase they heard all oh, the yeah, time. Of course. I got in fights with, I mean, I literally fought my way through school because somebody say something stupid about my parents and, and I'd, I'd lose my crap on people, man. I, I had a temper. 
Um, I was always defending and protecting and advocating for my mom and dad. So look back on it. I am who I am because of those days. Yeah. 